Well, 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 welcome, welcome for another week of the Palms Up Show. Palms up to you guys out there. Hello to my beautiful overseer and welcome back for another week of the Palms Up Show. If you guys will do us a favor and share the link, you know what we do. You know how it is. It's your girl, it's your girl. And this is part three, part three that we're sharing with you uh, regarding our DC circulator workers. For those of you who have been following the feed, who have been up on everything, you know that we had a Labor Day protest and we invited the uh, DC circulator workers to the platform in order that they could share their continued frustrations, continued concerns about a contract that was awarded by DDOT in the city in, in December. Imagine that, a five-year contract. And the contract was uh, withdrawn due to budget reasons, the mayor says, and as you would imagine, just like we pay our insurance, these workers have some sort of insurance. And we're going to be talking to a representative of the ATU, Local 689 Union. They tell me that the D.C. circulators have two, two unions that represent them. And perhaps if you guys stay involved, we can get a word from the Local 2 representatives to show up. Because one thing we want to make sure, just like with the insurance that we pay for and don't need, don't use until we need it, we want to make sure that the union representations are out in front and definitely supporting these DC circulator workers. As you've heard for the last few weeks, um, guys, they they're dealing with all kinds of emotional challenges. Whether it's from investing in higher living understanding, why not? They thought they had job stability problems up. Well, what does job stability look like in the district? when you're told you have a five-year contract and then you don't, or now you're finding out you don't have a job, as you would imagine, as you would feel, they're frustrated. They want answers. And more than anything, they want to hear from this D.C. Council. They want to understand what their understandings are. What are their powers? How can they get involved and help these unions to be made whole? It's your girl. It's your girl. And yep, it's another week of the Palms Up show. And just like always, if you want to join the discussion, you can go to www.healthydcandme.org and get the Zoom link and come in. Come in and join the discussion so that you too can get prepared for the September 23rd rally mm -hmm, down at the Wilson Building. Yes, yes, yes. We're joining. We're joining the ranks with the DC circulator workers who will not stop raising their voice. You've probably heard them on the news. You've probably heard them on the newspaper. Guys, if you are listening tonight, if you're watching tonight and you want to know how you can get involved, you can support the union's efforts, the Local 689, as well as the D.C. circulators in their continued fight for what they believe is an unjust, an unjust way to have the rug pulled out from under them. And tonight, you're going to get updates going to hear about what's been going on. You're going to hear that there's a link. Uh oh you can go to www.healthdcme.org. The button on the front page that says, help us to create a healthier DC. And in that, you will see the link to go, uh, help the DC circulators, summons the members of the DC council, summons the mayor to raise the standards for DC workers. Whether they are residents or not, there should be a higher standard that this city, the nation's capital, follows in order to make sure that the health and well-being of our citizens is not unnecessarily violated. It's your girl, it's your girl, and you know, just like the other day, we shut it down. It's time to shut this nation's capital down if we can't get honest and fair, accountable and transparent governing. All right now, make it count in those voting boxes. This is why you get involved, so that you can vote for leaders, palms up, vote for leaders that will not make decisions about your livelihood, uh, that will jeopardize your well-being. Guys, it's your girl, it's your girl. What more can we say? Have I given you a long enough intro out there, palms up? All right, all right, you should be settled and you should have this link shared. Guys, join me. Join me as I welcome Mr. Matthew Girardi, who is the communications director over at the ATU Local 689. 
Matthew, palms up to you and welcome to the Palms Up Show. Rhonda, thanks so much for having me. Thank you. I'm going to come back and pick you up very soon. I just want to greet all of your loyal, loyal workers here on the call. Hello, Glenda. Hello, Dereji. Hello, Cameron. Hi, welcome, Cameron. So glad you're here. Palms up. And to all my wonderful workers on the call. Uh-oh, I see, look like I see uh, Tracy's on the call. Mm-hmm. And I see my girl. I see my girl front and center. Welcome back, DC Circulator Worker. I want to stand with you. Guys, I want you to know that we have a lot of folks planning to stop by the Palms Up show tonight. We've got to get to the bottom of this, but more importantly, as a community, as a community who supports positive mental health actions, we want to make sure that we stand strong with these DC circulator workers. So without any further ado, I'm going to invite Matthew to come back to the forefront and help us to understand from the union's perspective just what exactly is going on. If you guys recall, I read the union's response to this matter, and Matthew penned that response. So it's so wonderful and such an honor, Matthew, for you to take time out of your schedule on a weeknight at 7 p.m. to come and address this matter. So I know you're busy. I know you're compassionate about uh, standing with your workers. So without any further ado, would you please help us understand what in the world is going on when a contract is awarded and these workers now find themselves in a frenzy nine months later. Thank you so much, Matthew. Absolutely. Thank you for that introduction, Rhonda. Like you said, this is an incredibly tenuous circumstance in which, frankly, we have all been put in a horrible situation by the mayor, by DDOT, by the whole city district executive, in that we were told, I can tell you, shortly before the mayor dropped her budget, she came to us and she said, hey, we're looking at cutting DC Circulator, but we want to get these folks over to WMATA, over to Metro. And we said, okay, let's continue to have this conversation. We're not going to support cutting DC Circulator without having a plan in place for everybody to be taken care of, for the facilities, for the rolling stock, for all this to be transferred over and done in, like you said, a good government way with oversight, with accountability, doing right by district working families and working people. We heard back, the latest was the end of April this year. And we were told that we would have a plan by, I wanna say Wednesday, April 17th, if I was correct. Um, only after we have been working council very hard in communication constantly with a number of our allies in the Wilson building, Finally, just last night, we got reports out from DDOT about what a transition might look like. The problem is that it looks like a kid who forgot to do his homework, put it in last minute, didn't finish it. It's half baked. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't give us a plan that we need to make sure that everybody's made whole. So yeah. now, mm -hmm. yes. I'm sorry to cut you off. Would you help us understand a little more in detail that with all that you can share, what was presented and what are you guys seeing happen in order for you to be whole from your perspective? Absolutely. So what was presented um, in that report was frankly not much for our workers and our members, unfortunately, so far. It has been a reactive report and is saying that they talked with Metro and they talked with all these other service providers and they were doing job fairs. But the problem, as we know, is that Folks who are going to a new job like that, they're starting at the very bottom of the pay scale. They're having to start all over for folks who have been driving for 19 years or similar service of time, right? We have folks 15, 19 years um, who have been with Circulator near the very beginning. So the problem with all these job fairs as their answer to a transition is that, again, it's not making these folks whole. What we're advocating for instead is the same model that brought Metro bus together in the very first place. For a long time, district residents, you probably know that before WMATA, we had district transit, DC transit mm -hmm. rather. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and effectively what happened was that in 1973, uh, the district along with a lot of the other surrounding jurisdictions decided that the service that was being provided by these local private entities was mm -hmm. not cutting it. So they effectively revoked the charter 
for all the service providers and said, hey, we're going to get Metro, WMATA at the time, or WMATA C, to take mm -hmm. over this service. And so therefore, all those workers were able to transfer over from DC Transit and the other companies with their livelihoods intact. And that language is still preserved both in law and in our collective bargaining agreement. It's called Section 109. What that would do if the district invoked it was that it would say, okay, we're going to begin the process of transferring over rolling stock, routes, riders, and obviously workers. Mm -hmm. And because it's a direct successorship, we would be able to enact that successor language in our collective bargaining agreement, thereby preserving the livelihoods of these folks. So if you're making 40 bucks an hour over at Circulator, if mm -hmm. this was done the way that we want it to be done, you will still be making 40 bucks an hour over at Metro, if not more, and with the Metro benefits. So that's what we are urging the district to act upon. I was down at the Wilson building, as a matter of fact, just today, talking with council members, because frankly, they were lied to just as much as the public and we were lied to um, in that DDOT came into them in their oversight hearings mm -hmm. in the Transportation Environment Committee. And they said, we're working on a transition. They didn't say that we're working on a liquidation, we're working on a shutdown. They said, we're working on a transition. And so that implies that you're not just closing down and leaving people cold on the side of the road to fend for themselves. And that's what this mayor and that's what this DDOT administration have done so far. It's unacceptable. And we're working so that when council comes back next week, that we mm -hmm. have emergency legislation ready to go and force DDOT to initiate that transfer. I, I like that. And thank you for being so detailed. I'm going to invite our workers to come to the forefront in just a moment. A couple of pieces of information have crossed my desk. I just want to see if you can clarify. When you mentioned WMATA and the fact that obviously this is uh, in your peripheral scenario, there's an absorption of absorption of the DC circulator workers into that net, uh, network that doesn't have them uh, losing their pay. Um, yes. The reality of what we're hearing or what we've heard is that some of the workers that have applied have possibly been turned down. Um, and then we also, we were reading in today's uh, or a headline that came across my desk, something along the lines that Metro is already pushing to replace the routes. And um, of course, the workers are confused because they were told uh, that the, the city was going to save 30 plus million dollars to be able to cut, you know, that's the reasoning behind shutting down the DC circulator was to preserve the money in the budget, but obviously when you see Metro coming forward, looking to expand and obviously uh, going to ask for money, it makes the workers feel that there's something else going on. That's number one. And then the second piece to that was uh, the fact that the fare boxes or something haven't been working, but the reality is that there was a decision made that the ridership was not solid or consistent enough to support it. Um, and then we see a ribbon cut on a blue bus in Anacostia. Will you weigh in on any of that? Yeah, I can speak to a bit of Metro just announced it was taking some of the service and um, or they was going to beef up some of the routes that um, were also served by Circulator. I mean, what makes this all the more confounding, disappointing, frustrating, stupid, what have you, um, is that the supposed reason behind cutting circulator was supposed to be that the district would save money and they could turn the service over to Amada. The problem is that, you know, it looks like the mayor and my read into it is that the mayor and DDOT accelerated even the transition. And that's even why at the beginning of this, I will admit, you know, we were shocked because we got maybe two hours notice, a few hours notice of time of when we were going to see an accelerated timeline of it going from service being stopping on Mar in March 2025 to service mm -hmm. ending December 31, 2024, right? We got basically no advance notice of that. Um, that was supposed to be, and my read into it was to save money. But frankly, the fact of the matter is that if you don't have a negotiated transfer, like I outlined earlier, mm -hmm. right? what's going to happen to all those facilities you know there's one there are three garages one of them is owned by the national park service so you can't do anything with it but even in ddot's own hastily you know last minute late homework report that they just submitted last night in the same report they say that they're keeping one of the garages to house ddot's electric vehicle fleet 
And then at the same time, it says that they're trying and that WMATA is interested in taking the electric vehicles. So which is it? Are they going to, if the electric vehicle fleet is going to WMATA, then wouldn't you want to sell that garage to WMATA? Wouldn't you not want to keep it in that case? Mm -hmm. It makes no sense. And I will also mention here that the district was awarded $9.5 million in federal grants from the Department of Transportation for the purchase of zero emissions buses that have not been allocated to date. And what that means is that in next year's budget, if there is a just wind down and not a successorship of Circulator, the district would have to find those funds and reimburse the federal government. So now we're having to actually pay the federal government because we're ending the service versus if we were to transition it over to WMATA, that would be a clear successorship and the district and WMATA could work that out between themselves of how they're going to handle that, right? Uh, it makes no sense whatsoever. It is a ham-fisted attempt to grab cash and frankly, the three month acceleration of this timeline my read on it too, again, not only was it to save extra money so that this mayor could give extra tax breaks to her millionaire and billionaire friends, but also so that, frankly, she could prevent the coalescing of any organized opposition to this with only two weeks in the council for them to move emergency legislation. Thankfully, we have been in constant communication with our friends in the Wilson building. We may have not been telegraphing that to everybody, but mm -hmm. we have been talking constantly with them, giving them updates on it. Um, and I'm very confident and hopeful that when we come back into session next Monday, we can hit the ground running and get some emergency legislation pushed through to make sure that this transition is done in the right way. Okay, and when you say the right way, is your plan accounting for all workers or is there some sort of IRP that has to be uh, uh, you know, acknowledged or what in your perfect world would happen for workers? Yeah, the 73 precedent um, is wow. a transfer from my understanding of all workers and, and operating and uh, necessary parts there. So my understanding, again, is that this would mean a transfer over the workers um, from DDOT, from RAPDEV over to WMOP. Okay. Um, a similar circumstance was seen back in 2019 when we had a strike over at Cinderbed Road Garage mm -hmm. um, and we had workers uh, who were effectively privatized, brought into the WMATA fold and made whole that way. Okay. And, and a couple of things. What would you say the uh, communication is between uh, your union? Because I know you can't speak for local too, although I wish you would could because we haven't been able to get any consistency from them. So I can't thank you enough for coming forward because our viewers and the workers, we want to understand this. And, you know, we've been watching the pattern of behavior of this mayor. Um, something that comes to mind is the uh, SNAP program. And I know that we're facing as a city a $4 million fine, where just uh, almost a year ago, if that long, we were facing the same situation where this mayor was taking that away. And so we had to rally around it to keep yeah. it in place. But the reality is that the district is facing a $4 million fine basically because they haven't allocated those monies properly. Some folks are getting more than what they should be getting and some are getting less. And so the pattern of behavior of this mayor of not having transparent yeah, you know, understanding with regards to, to uh, her uh, budgeting understandings is it's really questionable. Um, but I understand that there are a series of meetings that are happening over uh, where you guys are uh, at the union. And I've heard from the workers, which I'm going to open it up and ask them to speak uh, to you this evening uh, transparently so that we can make sure we're all on the same page for this rally uh, that's going to happen on September the 23rd at the Wilson Building. And more importantly, we want to make certain that the workers have a clear understanding of you know, the efforts that are being made on their behalf. I know that some of them are not quite on the same page of understanding, for example, there's a meeting and whether or not uh, someone got the letter or notice in time enough to understand it. Um, I know that they rallied themselves at the uh, Freedom Plaza and they could they weren't as full as they could be because they didn't want to lose their job. So again, as the mental health advocate, I'm very happy that you all are in the forefront as the union 
to support them because the last thing I want to understand is that uh, they have to choose between fighting to be made whole and whether or not they're going to be let go for trying to exercise their right to do so. Will you speak on that? Absolutely. I, the question is, to clarify what efforts are being made on their behalf at this point? Or well, what efforts are being made internally to make sure that they understand what's being done? Because many of them didn't know about the meetings um, and, and they were frustrated that they couldn't run the school center. Now you are running at the school center. Was that an effective mode of communication so that they all are aware? Sure. Absolutely. Great question. So as of right now, we do have a text list um, that does go out to about 100 or so of the circulator members that we have good numbers for. Um, I will try to find the exact um, way to get folks onto the list. But at this point, we have been going through that um, to let folks know. Uh, we have a great executive board shop steward um, in C.J. Miller, um, who has mm -hmm. been communicating a lot of internally the discussions and how we're trying to move forward. Uh, we have also been flyering both through our organizers um, and through our staff to make sure that folks know about this. So we've been putting out internal flyers, external flyers, and also flyering ridership. Um, I know that a lot of folks have come to the Union Hall to pick up ridership flyers. We're very grateful for that um, because, frankly, at this point, we want to make sure that ridership is engaged as well, that everybody is aware that not only this is happening, but we can take concrete action to avert uh, effectively what's a, a circulator meltdown managed by Mayor Bowser and her administration. Yes, and I appreciate that clarity. Um, Mr. Perry Red is a working rights advocate, uh, healthy DC, for the leader who's very proactive and front with us for matters such as this, and obviously, um, one of his questions, and I'm going to invite Mr. Red to unmute um, in order that we can invite him to the discussion. After 25 plus years of workers' rights, you can imagine um, all of the questions and concerns that he must raise. But he's asking, is this a runaround by the mayor and subversive attempt to decrease the total amount of unionized workers, in your opinion? Yeah, I'll I'll answer that in saying I can't speak exactly to her motivations. She would just have she would have to answer. But nonetheless, it's disturbing to see that this is being done in such a callous way. I mean, this did not have to be so. Honestly, again, the mayor's team reached out to us at the beginning of the budget, mm -hmm. gave us that ask. We were willing to work with them and say, hey, show us a plan. Show us a plan. Let's work together. Let's make a plan. And frankly, the fact of the matter was that until yesterday, they were even breaking budgetary language. The budget had said that DDOT needed to provide monthly reports on the status of the transition of DC circulator, rolling stock facilities, workers over mm -hmm. to work. And it wasn't until, again, we started really ramping up our pressure, doing ridership flyers, going to the Wilson building, making this known on social media, advocates like yourself and everybody on this call, raising awareness about it, that they finally put out reports. Those reports weren't useful. They weren't particularly informative. But nonetheless, the fact of the matter is that up until yesterday, when the pressure is being raised, they felt that they could run against the language and the letter and the spirit of the law. So it's very disturbing. The cavalier attitude is disappointing. The district mm -hmm. deserves better. I remember back in 2022, when we attempted to have dialogue around when we were negotiating for circulator contract, mm -hmm. um, I believe DDOT wouldn't meet with us at that time, if I was correct. Uh, I could be wrong there. Um, and so the answer that we got effectively was that these workers aren't DDOT workers. And so therefore they, this isn't our responsibility. But then mm -hmm. I remember something along the lines of when we were getting ready to go out on the picket line, I believe the, the quote from the mayor was, if you strike, you strike against me. Mm. So wow. which is it? Is it that you are responsible for us and you can help us improve living standards, working conditions, benefits for folks, or are you not? And right. it seems like even in the report that they put out, they were accusing the contractor, RATP dev, RAP dev, of not meeting with the union to discuss transition plans. But the problem with that, it's a whole red herring that's smoke and mirrors mm -hmm. because RATP Dev doesn't have 
any authority on whether or not these folks get over to Metro and whether they're made whole. They're just the contractor that DDOT has hired to mm -hmm. run the service in this case. Mm -hmm. So it's all a red herring. Um, it reeks of an administration that's unprepared, uninformed, um, and just doesn't mm -hmm. care. And that's a real shame because, again, had we worked in partnership, frankly, we know that we have a really good contract over at WMATA. We mm -hmm. want to make these folks whole. There is plenty of law mm -hmm. and precedent in place to get this done the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a, a real missed opportunity. Wow. Hey, Matthew, Matthew, take a breather. Thank you so much. You jumped on and you just went right in and I can't thank you again enough. Hey, guys, hey, guys, it's your girl. It's your girl and palms up. Guys, we're talking to Mr. Matthew Durati with the local, with the ATU local 689 union, rep one of the unions that are representing the D.C. circulated workers. And guys, I want you to know that this is another one of those something is sour in the milk conversation. So please share and please stay tuned. Mr. Red, I know you must have some questions or a comment. Um, we've heard quite a bit from Matthew, but Matthew Durati, again, meet Mr. Perry Red, CEO of Sincere 7 and Workers' Rights Advocate uh, for just about three decades now. Hey, Pete. How you doing, Rhonda? Thank you for the palms up tonight. And thank you uh, to the DC Circulator workers who are here tonight and those who joined us on Labor Day for our protests, um, you are definitely in our mission. And thank you, Matt Giraldi, for uh, coming on to Palms Up. Uh, I asked uh, about the subversive, or at least the appearance of a subversive attempt to decrease unionized workers. Uh, we know what the mayor's done with the uh, nurses Association. She, I know what she's done with the Teachers Association and the way DC has set up a two-headed unconstitutional um, public school system, charters v. Uh, traditional. I want to ask about, uh, Matt, your support for the workers on the ground. When I say your, I'm talking about the union. And I, 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 when the when the workers were out at Freedom Plaza, um, I'm not sure that the union saw that as a useful tactic. But uh, when we talk about standing up against um, uh, unjust contract negotiations, uh, I would believe that a union would uh, support all hands on deck. So tell me what I'm missing and what I saw in the union support for those workers who came out, roughly 20, 25 workers that came out to uh, Freedom Plaza. Are you speaking to the rally that happened a little while back or are you speaking to Labor Day in particular? Uh, no, the, the one prior to Labor Day. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I mean, we, we had heard about it, but frankly, we weren't part of organizing it. So that's why we didn't. We mm -hmm. couldn't comment on it at that point. You know, we yeah. obviously encourage our members and even to this day. Um, and as a matter of fact, one of our next steps is going to be for anybody who is interested and we will have this out in flyers. Uh, we're going to have an organizer meeting uh, very soon to finalize the word on this. But we're going to have flyers. We're going to have phone banks uh, to call the D.C. Council. We want to make sure that everybody is going down to the Wilson Building, making their voices heard and ensuring that everybody is being seen by these council members. So absolutely, we support that right. And, and my last question to you, yeah. Matt, about enhancing, um, growing that contact list of workers. Yes. Um, I, will you commit to that to these workers who are on this call tonight? Absolutely. So I can tell you right now, I found the exact um, one here. If you text DC Circulator to 47400, you should be signed up directly for our text list. That's DC Circulator, one word, to 47400. Thanks so, a lot, Matt. Ron? Of course. Yes, thank you, Matt, for that. And again, if you guys were grabbing a pen and writing slow like myself, you can text the word DC Secular Circulator in one word to 47400. And for my seniors out there, I know sometimes, you know, uh, things get away from us, but that's DC, C I R C U L A T O R to 47400. And you can show your support. Hey, Matthew, before I open it Put up. Put it in the chat, Ron. Okay. Before I open it up to the workers, 
Um, I understand that. I'm sorry, and Perry, you just mentioned something and it made me just uh, lose my whole train of thought, but I'll put that in the chat for you. Why don't we go ahead and open it up to the workers and I'll come back around. Hello, hello, uh, Glenda, will you unmute and start this conversation off? What are you hearing and what do you want to add to the conversation or say to Mr. Uh, Giraldi, who's taking time to come out this evening? Palms up to you, Queen. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm actually on my way to work, so I'm driving. But um, I just want to say I appreciate 689 for finally stepping up. Again, Local 2 has yet to show us anything. We still can't get in touch with them. So 689, if we're included, we appreciate it because we have supervisors, we have utilities, we have maintenance. We have OCC, we have dispatch, we have all these people who are represented by Local 2 and they have yet to step up and say anything. We're reaching out to our Vice President Stiller every day and he's not answering our calls. So we will continue to fight and we will be on the line um, come the 21st to just have our, our voices heard. We will continue to fight as the supervisors, but a lot of people have left already because they need to just continue their livelihood. They didn't know what was happening. They didn't know what was going on. So my concern is about these people who've already left. They're in a lesser paying job. What is going to happen with them? Yeah, if I may, may respond, thank you so much for the question. Thank you for all your work. Thank you for your passion. Um, I can say that for the folks who are still at DC Circulator, stay at DC Circulator at this point, because there's going to be what we want for there to be is a successorship, a bringing over. So there are some folks who, if you leave before you're brought over, that decreases our ability to fight for you and to bargain for you, right? If you stay at DC Circulator, that means that we still have a shot to bring you over um, should the council do the right thing. Uh, when it comes back next week. That's awesome. And Matt, you know, something that I do want to mention, um, I'm sure because you guys are at the table that these workers have all kinds of services available to them, but I definitely would like to understand if there's some sort of concerted effort um, on you all's behalf to reach out to them, to be able to have uh, people that they can speak to professionally as many of them go through this. Uh, the first week that they showed up to the platform, um, not that they're not very distraught now, but I had 60 year olds that were concerned. And then I had first time apartment owners and, and, and per home purchasers and, and new cars and just, you know, folks that have kids in college. Um, so some very major life decisions have to happen for many of them. And one of the things I heard was that some of them are contemplating possibly having to be back in those lines for SNAP benefits and housing benefits. And so can you help us understand what the union's posture is into helping to support them from a mental wellness standpoint with all of this? Yeah, I can tell you that we don't have staff at the union who are that kind of, those kinds of professionals who can do that kind of work. Um, our goal right now has been to bargain and to economically secure the most expeditious um, transfer of making sure that we get answers that they are being made whole as soon as humanly possible. Um, and so I hear all that, I hear that concern. I wish that we could be able to provide those services directly. The, the reality of the fact is that we just do not have those professionals on staff to be able to do that. Um, so what we're going to do is what we're good at, which is fighting, winning, making sure that we get a resolution as soon as humanly possible. Um, unfortunately, just again, the mayor pulled the rug out from under all of us and just lied to the public. Same with DDOT, right? Um, so we weren't in the position where we could react as nimbly and as quickly as I wish we could have. You know, if we if this was happening in March, then I think that um this would be a little bit of a different story. And frankly, I think that the council would have been able to react more. But I think part of the design of why the mayor, again, moved the end date from March 2025 to December 31, 2024, was to throw everybody for a loop. 
Um, and she successfully did that for a little bit. Uh, but listen, we got counsel coming back. We have a council that's informed. We have a council that's angry, that was lied to by this mayor and this administration. I like that. I like that response. What I will share with you is that as an active 501c3 in the mental health lane, um, on the commute level, I would like to hang on forward. How we help that is just on end to take us moving forward because one of the things that we uh, rallied for on Labor Day was for the violation of the civil and human rights that all too often many of our workers and uh, residents feel when situations like this happen. I'm not sure what the makeup of your workership is. Um, or how many exactly you have, but the predominance of feeling like you're being treated a certain way because of your ethnic or social or economic backgrounds is not is very touchy. And so we want to make sure that as we hold this mayor and DC council accountable, that we do so with the understanding of the mental wellness lens intact. So that's a conversation I'd love to have with you and your professionals there, but I hear you loud and clear. You didn't have a lot of time to make a lot of decisions, um, but one of the things we want to do is we want to grow forward. Um, and I want to come up for air for a minute. I am going to come back to get those answers, how many workers and the makeup of your workership. But I want to open the floor. We've been on for about 30 minutes now, and I want to open it up to more of your workers. So thank you again for your patience and for your transparency. It means everything. Hello, DC Circulator. Come on, you guys have been so patient. Unmute and Ronnie, help. Yes, Ronnie, can I say something else, please? Sure, um, also, um, come August, I mean, mm, September 30th is the first round of the layoff. Um, they've already said something about the people being laid off and everything. So we want to know what's going to happen with that. And also, in applying for WMATA, I'm a supervisor, but they're bringing me on as an operator. I have experience, a lot of experience as a supervisor, and they're, they're bringing me on as an operator, but I did apply for both. So, I mean, the supervisors are being not only bumped down, taking their pay, but they're also being bumped down to be operators. I, I believe from what uh, Matthew mentioned is that that's why it's important that you guys show up for these council understandings. I realize that you guys have been given an opportunity, Glenda, to make appointments uh, via a link in order that you could speak with the different council members involved in order that you can share those concerns. The reason why we suggested that you guys push for a council hearing before we understood what your union representatives were in the background doing um, was because we knew that there has to be an oversight an oversight right. to address just what you're speaking on. And I would imagine, and from my question to Mr. Girardi, Mr. Girardi, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, my question at the beginning of the hour to him was that what they're working on apply for all of you all and in terms of the position all, right. does that keep you intact in terms of your pay. And Matthew, is that your intention right. again? Yes, that is okay. the intention. And so okay. as of right now, the application okay. process is being done again because the plan that the mayor has put in place is not a transition. It's a close down and we'll provide you job fairs and application portals where you know we'll give you a circulator code, but that's not the same as having a transition, right? That's not the same as bringing you over and keeping you intact and keeping your pay and keeping your livelihood intact. Um, so it, it's being done in a way that is is very, you know, we are trying our best, I can say, to leverage our relationship with WMATA uh, to ensure that as many folks as possible, even under this scenario, are brought over. But the fact of the matter is that it's not enough and the city uh, is absolutely failing to treat all of y'all the way that you deserve to be treated. And that's so true. Thank you for that. And while I have you, will you address Glenda's concerns about the September 30th layoffs as best you can and understand them to be at this point? Yeah, absolutely. I can tell you that that is one of our biggest concerns and why we want emergency legislation pu pushed um, when we first get back. So honestly, we have come out um, and talked to council about this. They're going to have a committee of the whole meeting as well as a legislative meeting next week where this could be introduced and passed. 
Um, so we are hoping that it gets done then. That would effectively say that instead of we us having these mass layoffs, we're going to have this transition and we're going to begin the process of that happening. So hopefully by this time next week, we have much more clarity about where we are, what a plan could be, but we really feel the timeline for that because once those, again, once those layoffs start, it becomes hard to put the genie back into the bottle, to put that toothpaste back into the tube, right? Uh, because folks will already have been laid off and it's not as easy to transfer people over and it's not as easy to make people whole in the same way administratively in the way that DDOT and WMATA and successorship agreements work. Okay, and I appreciate that as well. Will you take this moment to help us understand, you guys, when you responded to me on your link, to have fun better and show us forward. At the time you responded, you were up about 770, close to 800 signatures. How is that working out? And can you share with our audience how they can get involved to support you as well? Absolutely. That's a great question. So I want to say that we are well over a thousand, probably close to 1400 at this point. I haven't checked uh, today to see exactly where we are, but those aren't signatures. Uh, to be clear, those are direct emails that have gone to the DDOT director's email um, and to the mayor's executive office email. Um, and I can share with everybody on here that the DDOT director, unprompted with one of the members of DC Council, started complaining about how people were blowing up her inbox on this. So I don't want the DDOT director or anybody else to feign ignorance and say that I haven't heard from workers when in private. She is actively saying, wow, 689 and these workers, they're blowing up my inbox. I got all these emails. What am I going to do? Um, so it has been a lot of momentum. We have loved to see it. The next thing I would say, and that we are going to begin flyering on, and I will gladly follow up on, is that we mm -hmm. are going to begin uh, phone banking. So folks mm -hmm. calling their council members to in support of passage for this emergency legislation so they can get passed as quickly as humanly possible. I can also say for any DC circulator workers, obviously, who are on this call, who are listening either live or after the fact, we're also going to be having lobby days on the 16th and on the 17th, I will be at the Wilson Building all day meeting with every single member of council, making sure that we get around and we tell the stories of these public servants to every single one of the DC council members so they understand the situation. Them, like us, have had the rug pulled out from under them. The mayor promised a transition. For those who may not be on the transportation committee, who aren't paying close enough attention, they may not be aware of this. So it's on our job also to go in there and not only hold the feet to the fire to say, hey, vote for this legislation, but also to explain to them, for some folks who might be supportive but just don't know enough yet, to say, hey, here's what's happening. Here's what we were told. Here's what we've contributed to this community. Here's what we've done. And here's why we need a just transition for every single one of these workers. Okay, great. And and again, approximately how many workers, I know you represent the service workers, so approximately how many would you say your union is representing under Absolutely. the circulator? I would say about 200. 200? Okay. And, more than that? Yeah. And then in terms of the makeup, if you are aware, is there a predominance in any way? Is it more balanced? Do you have quite a bit of diversity? Can you help us understand that? Yeah, I don't have that data, so I can't speak to it responsibly. But overwhelmingly, obviously, our workers come from black and brown communities, immigrants, working class people. Um, these are folks who have come from communities and our membership. Mostly we have ideas about where they live. You know, our words five, seven, eight, uh, a little bit of four for the part. You know, these are traditional working class communities of the district that have made up the backbone of our black and brown communities that need representation, that need investment, that need help from the mayor and from their council members to avert this catastrophe. Thank you for that. And just for a little bit more of uh, transparency, uh, the Healthy DCME Leadership Coalition, as you've heard us reference several times, did extend an invitation to the workers to speak at our Labor Day uh, protest. And, and a lot of what we were protesting, as I mentioned to you, was the fact that we feel that the standards in our governing are so low that they are disproportionately negatively impacting uh, families of our brown, black and brown community. Um, and whether they reside here or work here should not matter when we talk about keeping us 
standard as the nation's capital. And uh, we submitted, uh, and I myself and that my team will be down on the 16th uh, meeting with the first round of council members uh, to push forward something we call the CEASE Act. And that basically in it has five components. It speaks to the housing injustice, it speaks to the economic divide and the reality of the DEI uh, in our town not being as, uh, uh, you know, the uh, diversity, the equity, the uh, uh, exclusion of, again, our less fortunate, less economically sound citizens, and the reality of them not really understanding the legislative process. And, and obviously, when something this impactful affects them, they don't understand that legislative piece. So it's so important that you guys are out in the forefront pushing, and I just want you to know as mental health advocates, we have also added it to what we call our buffet of concerns. And on top of that, we've also asked for a proactive audit, transparent audits, so that we don't have a repetitive of contracts being awarded and these uh, uh, citizens having to go through this at, as a result of a mayor lying. I mean, those two words shouldn't even be in the same sentence. So there you have it. I've said it. Palms up, guys. We've got some work to do. So Matt, uh, on September the 23rd, you guys are rallying. Are you rallying right out front of the Wilson building? Or is it internally uh, in terms of the Wilson building? Will you give us a little bit of details on what you understand September the 23rd at 10 a.m. to be? Absolutely. We're <laughs> Planning on going right in front of the Wilson building if we have to, and we have a big enough crowd, I'd love to bring folks into Freedom Plaza and fill it up. Um, so the more we have, the merrier. Uh, encourage everybody to come at this point. Um, we already have, I believe, a few council members who have showed interest in attending as well to stand in solidarity with us. Um, so again, 23rd, uh, 10 a.m., we look forward to seeing everybody there. Okay, and then final question for this moment. Um, who's supporting you on that DC Council? Um, just to give us an idea of the proactive leadership that's uh, you know, already showing itself for you all and for this cause. Absolutely. I can say that every single member of the Committee on Transportation and the Environment that Perry, I saw that you put in the chat, um, have been very receptive to our concerns at this point. Again, the mayor and DDOT went to them as well and told them that they were promised a transition. And all of them have agreed essentially that these workers need to be made whole. Um, I've talked and had multiple conversations with the staff of council member Charles Allen, who's been very good on this. Council member Janice Lewis George, who's been very good on this. Uh, council member Christina Henderson, all of them in particular, it's council member Parker. Um, I just talked with council member Fruman the other day. Um, all of them essentially agree that, and as a matter of fact, Council member Henderson was saying, well, they're having job fairs, but they're being brought over at the same rates of seniority, right? Because somebody who's driving for DC Circulator for 10 years is not the same as somebody who's being hired new off the street and doesn't have a CDL. And, you know, it was one of those like, please say psych moments, you know? And right. they, I was like, well, I got a bridge to sell you in that case um, because that's not the case. They're being hired as if straight from the bottom of the uh, pay scale. So all of them were under the impression that the mayor was doing X when instead uh, her and DDOT have been doing Y. So all of them are have so far been dedicated to finding a solution to make sure that we're getting this across the finish line. We're making everybody whole. Thank you so much for that. Um, I, guys, unmute uh, DC Circulators and let's start hearing from some of your voices. Do you have questions? Has uh, Matthew helped to address any concerns? Are there concerns we haven't raised? I want to hear from you guys. Thumbs up and welcome to the platform. Don't all speak at once. <laughs> I can't hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Because I can hear you. You're I can on. hear you. I'm looking at Ballot. She looks like she's saying something, but I'm reading her lips. <laughs> well, you go ahead. You have the floor, and then we'll get back to Ballot. Welcome to the Palms Up Show, Queen. Palms Up. Okay, my question is, I keep hearing you all talk about this transition plan. Now, with the transition plan, does that mean that the people that were rejected, that have already applied, will transition over as well? Or people that were terminated from WMATA. 
does that under the transition may, um, plan mean that they would transition over as well? My understanding yeah. under the successorship clause is yes. So similar mm -hmm. to how it was at Cinderbed Road when that garage got integrated, there were some folks who per se had either been rejected from Amada or who had been hired or fired, um, let go under circumstances, right? Um, they were brought back in. So our, our plan is hopefully to get, again, as many of those folks as possible and our transition plan under that successorship agreement would do that. Well, are there, is there anything that will prevent some of them from going? Is my, I guess that's the question that I wanna know. Under my understanding of the using the 1973 transition um, and successorship, no. But it's no guarantee. I can't speak definitively, you know, but my understanding is that those folks under the 73, under our plan, if that is passed, you know, knock on wood, would be able to get over. Okay. I also have a question about the information that you all put out. I think that some of the information, um, I saw a flyer, one that said uh, update important information for DC circulator. Does anybody have that flyer by any chance in front of them? No. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, because I don't have it on hand. But it was saying there was a meeting on Thursday at six o'clock. It had no date on it, no date specified. But that kind of information, in order for us to show up, we need a date because that's like um, we were being misinformed because we didn't have enough information. Some of us didn't attend. That can be any Thursday of the month. So that was one issue. Another issue that I have is that with the information that you all are putting out as far as the rally and some of the things that are going on, like, for instance, the um, meet with the council, a lot of the drivers had not received that information. Was that information provided to CJ? Yes. We haven't gotten it. What, has anybody seen CJ? No. <laughs> CJ okay. hasn't been to work in over, and I know for a fact, over um two weeks. So CJ is not very reliable as the steward that he's supposed to be. And he has not been in this fight with us. He has oh. not been to one of the rallies. He has not done, and I, I understand that he's lost his mom. He lost his mom. Okay, so my question is for that. Since he lost his mom and he's dealing with that issue, is there somebody else that can stand in for us and, and, and get some of this information until CJ is able to do this for us? Because uh, I would definitely volunteer myself. Sure, absolutely. I will say text DC Circulator 47400. This information is all being sent out on the text blasts. We will be sure to get it to you. Uh, um, CJ has, I can tell you, I've met with him multiple times. He texted me just today. Um, he is working on this. Um, so honestly, not everybody and not everything is public all the time. But I can tell you that CJ has been a consistent advocate. Um, whether or not he's been public about that, I mean, you know, he's not exactly the showiest person in my experience. And sometimes that's good when you have somebody who's humble and who's doing the work and doesn't need to toot his own horn. Well, okay. you can inform your people that you're representing, because if we don't know what's going on and we're in the blind, how can we be supportive to him? So that let's do this. Sense. Let's do this. Let's be proactive. Let's all take a moment and text 47400. Text the word DC circulator and then you will be added to their information so that now we can start trying to be proactive about how we can fix this in terms of the communications. Right. Um, because the reality is, is that you guys, as we've been saying, you must show up and show a united front um, if you're expecting to be made whole. Um, you know, as my dear granny would say, we can disagree behind closed doors, but when we walk out, we walk out on one accord. And that couldn't be more truer in this situation because your frustrations need to be channeled towards the DC council members, especially the members of the transportation committee, which have been put in a chat, which you guys have heard from us as well. Um, there was a question from Tracy who wanted to understand what will actually be being done on the 16th and the 17th on the lobbying day that Matthew mentioned down at the Wilson building. 
and uh, Mr. Red aptly responded that the 16th and 17th are lobbying days yep. uh, where workers get to uh, talk directly with the council member. So as we've been asking you all to do, and as I asked you to do on the very first show, I asked you to write your thoughts down, write your frustrations down, because this is some sort of diary or makeshift so that you can show up prepared to have these conversations, because these are the people that you want to be able to speak to. Now, uh, Matthew, for full transparency's sake, I will also say to you that um, I don't know if this contract dispute, or, or not even a contract dispute, the fact that you guys were uh, had the rug pulled out from under you, um, has everybody gone through some sort of emotions, no doubt, but there were concerns that perhaps they weren't as solid in their feelings of the representation um, and I would be remiss to have you at the platform if I didn't actually give you an opportunity to understand that and to respond. Would you help the workers, you know, understand your position um, about these feelings of the uh, representation for the union not being as solid as they would anticipate it to be? Yeah, I, I would say to anybody who feels that way, I, I'm really sorry to hear that, but I, I will also say and I was getting into this and alluding to this with CJ. I've been working on this, submitting testimony, talking to council members all the way since March and April. Um, there hasn't been a week period, um, and I, I mean like a week long period, uh, where I haven't done some kind of outreach, talked to a coalition, uh, gone to the Wilson building, taken meetings directly on this. Um, and the union and President Jackson have been working around the clock to ensure that exactly this is happening. Um, the problem that, again, we had is that we have a mayor who not only didn't provide that plan, then broke the law, and then accelerated the timeline by three months. Um, there are some factors like that that are just out of our control and that we are reacting to. But I can tell you that from talking with union leadership, for example, President Ray Jackson, he was laid off from WMATA uh, years ago. He knows what it's like to, he, uh, he tells a story to me that he had just moved into a new apartment. He's just getting his life set up and then he got laid off from WMATA. So union membership knows this, union leadership knows this. We take it personally, um, we fight. We fought in 2022 on the strike. We're gonna fight now. We fought Fairfax Connector for our members. We fought at Loudoun County Transit for our members. We're gonna continue to do that. And the next phase of that is obviously going to be going public, bringing this pressure. Uh, again, the mayor did this deliberately to try to short circuit any kind of effort to do that. It's on us at this point to come together, make sure that we are getting this game plan through, making sure that we're making everybody right um, and going from there. Thank you for that. Um, any other questions from our DC circulators? I want you guys to speak up. This is your opportunity for clarity. Yes. I have a question. Is it anything that you all need from us so that we can be in support of whatever you're doing? Absolutely. So we have a number of ways. Uh, the first, obviously, 16th, 17th, everybody and anybody who can come to the Wilson building, we're going to be there from nine to six. Um, please, I'm going to put my email in the chat for everybody as well. It's M Girardi. That's M-G-I-R-A-R-D-I -I at ATU689.org. Please shoot me an email. We will also have a sign-up page for folks where you can go and say, I'm going to be available from 9 to 12. I'm going to be available from 12 to 3. I'm going to be available from 3 to 6 on Monday or on Tuesday, or I'm going to be available all day, both days, right? Um, the 23rd, obviously, big day, making sure that our voices is heard, making sure that we are having nice big crowd to show the mayor exactly that we are not a disorganized opposition. We are showing up, we are showing strong, and we are making our voices heard loudly and clearly. Um, the other thing I will say is that every single day, we have been ridership flowering, we have been membership flowering. Um, we are out, we are going to begin wheat pasting around the city to make sure that everybody knows about this rally. And I will also say the final point here, uh, we are beginning, uh, and again, we're going to have a meeting to just finalize this before we put it out, uh, but phone banking, right? If you can't show up on the 16th or the 17th for whatever reason, that's okay. We have an opportunity for you and that we are going to give you 
exactly the talking points that you need, the knowledge that you need to call your council people, to call the council chair, to call all of them and let them know exactly what your story is and how important it is that they vote for this emergency legislation. Uh, if we're able to do all that, if everybody's able to just do one thing, we're going to be in good shape. I have a question. Okay. Welcome to the Palms Up Show, Queen. Palms Up. Palms Up. Can I um, thank you, Matt, for, for sharing your time this evening with us. Um, I just saw something on Channel 5 saying that the Metro bus was going to be, it looks like from what I gathered, taking over the routes. Um, they just showed that. And when you say transition, are we going to transition to the point where um, leaving us in the garage with Cinder Bay? Because I know a huge issue is about the metro operators now having an issue with us coming over with seniority. So mm -hmm. to kill the noise, why can't we get a new garage, stay in our garage like we did Cinder Bay, and we keep our seniority? Because we want to keep our seniority too. Sure. And then you got to think, I'll be 60 in two years, and we got people that's 73. Now, if we go over there transition, we're going to be working night shift, late shift, who knows what. So that that's going to take a hit on us, on our well-being and our mental health as well. Sure. Also, I wanted to know, I sent a, a text to Mr. Jackson on, I believe, July the 23rd is when they gave us our termination notice one operator got it and it spread it like wildfire. Mm -hmm. When did you guys know or get involved before July the 23rd? You guys, and, if, and I'm sure you were involved, but we were we were not informed at all. So that that's a big issue with us because it's like, okay, you guys knew way ahead before July 23rd, but when we got hit with the termination letter, of course, everybody's like freaking out. You know what I'm saying? So the communication yeah. has been, it, it, it hasn't been. And that's like like a huge issue for us because it's, it's a trust issue right now. Because like I asked Mr. Jackson, I said, three years ago, when you guys came over to get us, three years ago, you guys came over to recruit us, come to Metro, come to Metro, go to Dash, go to Dash. So did you guys know three years ago that we were going to be sitting in this seat right now? The answer is absolutely not. We did not know that we would be sitting in this exact seat, right? Um, so what was the what was the what was the big issue about us coming over to Metro? Why was that such the rah rah? Like come Metro, go to Dash. Something was going on. The strike. They were telling us why why are we fighting for that. They Jackson kept saying we should just come to Wamada as if we feel like our job's been sabotaged. We feel like you know that. We can't trust anybody if the mayor's lying. We <laughs> was told right after, you know, we had the strike that we got we got our raises, but we were also being encouraged to come over to Wamada so that we can be under one umbrella. Like, and now here we are faced with these things that were spoken into existence from three years ago. Back when you all took over as our union. So a lot of the drivers are uncertain about which way to go because we're not sure who we're fighting against because DDOT, of course, and the mayor seems to be on the same page and you all seem to be clueless about everything. You're finding out around the same time as us. So we, it's like, we really don't know who to trust and we're just trying to figure out at this point, can we get some clarity about what's going on and we need help with trying to figure it out what we need to do and what we can do to help you all and how you all can help us to at least remove the barrier that we have with the trust issue. Absolutely. So let me get straight to the point that you were hearing there in terms of what we were talking about, come over to WMATA or come over to DASH or something like that, is that frankly for an individual circulator worker versus an individual DASH worker or an individual um, WMATA Metro bus driver, right? The contracts at Dash and at Wamada are more comprehensive. They're more secure in that case. So I think what President Jackson was probably saying at that time was that, look, if you want to make sure that you're getting job security, if you want to make sure that you are getting setting yourself for, up for the best possible career, the two places where we can guarantee that best were Wamada 
and Dash. I will also say that part of what we're talking about with One Umbrella is the history of this system and how Circulator and how all these other local systems throughout the country or throughout the region rather were set up, which is that back after 73, when we got all these, as I mentioned at the top and as I use for like the precedent for DC Transit and all these other local services, we got them all under one roof. Um, and at that point, what happened was that WMATA early on tried to challenge ATU 6A9 and our contract, um, and they tried to effectively void uh, the cost of living adjustment called the COLA for short. Mm -hmm. What happened in 1978 was a wildcat walkout strike that was made famous. It shut down the entire metro system, and 689 was able to win. That preserved a lot of the benefits that we still have at Metrobus, and there has not been a Metro strike since then. The problem of what happened was that after 78, there was this guy named Ronald Reagan who got elected. And Reagan came in and notoriously over at the air traffic controller's Patco strike, broke that strike and effectively threatened to lay off all the workers there. That sent a signal in 81 to everybody around the country that you were free to break unions, underpay workers, abuse worker power as you see fit. Greed is good is what the 80s were all about, right? So what starts happening? Well, all the localities start breaking off and running their own local service. So oh. if you look at, for example, Fairfax Connector, their Washington oh. Post coverage from back when they were talking about breaking off, the entire point of running localized private service, and they even say this proudly, was not only so that they could have more control, control meaning separation from the district, which was overwhelmingly black at the time and much more working class than it is now. So they want to separate from the district, but also because they thought they could save costs by, and they say this in the article, not paying the same rate as unionized Metro bus drivers. Hmm. They broke off deliberately to weaken the union and to set pay lower so they could save costs and run service. Okay. So what we are talking about and what we have been advocating is that instead of having all of these localized private services, be that Fairfax Connector, be that uh, DC Circulator, which again is still run through a contractor. It's not run directly through DDOT and that's, that's by design, right? Mm -hmm. It's not meant to be public because if it's public, then they actually have to, they're accountable. Mm -hmm. uh, but once we get those all back into and are able to run that service through WMATA, which again, 73 precedent, we are trying to get back to. That means that we are having a public um, version of this that is accountable, that has a good contract, that gives people a pension and better pay. And so we're trying to bring everybody to the point of where they're all getting that pension, where they're all getting that better pay, where they're all getting those better working conditions that we're seeing there, right? So that's what we're talking about with that. And that's what President Jackson was probably alluding to at the time. But could they have provided that kind of information then so we wouldn't even have had to strike? We could have just went on and pushed for that transition versus, but we're here now. So going forward, we need to, um, let me, can I get that, uh, text that we need to get this driver yes it's four seven four zero zero and you're going to text the word dc circulator all together with no spaces and i did so and i'm now in their text chain so i would imagine what that means is that now they have the ability to include us when they're sending out their updates that's but that's right. your girl is your girl. Palms up. We are going over the hour. It's so important sometimes that we bring you this information because so many lives are going to be impacted. We've been talking to the DC uh, circulator workers as well as the community uh, communications, sorry, director for the ATU Local 689, which is one of two unions that have represented these workers. And the reality is that uh, what uh, Matthew Girardi has been helping us understand is that they, too, in many ways, uh, were not able to prepare for this mayor and the unscrupulous behavior that's been uh, demonstrated in awarding a contract through DDOT uh, in December that 
uh, seemingly was supposed to be a five-year contract. And now these workers are finding out as soon as September the 30th, uh, the first round of layoffs will happen. And so if you ever believed in democracy out there, if you're someone sitting on the sideline that wants to feel effective, wants to be a part of the democracy, that this country affords us all, then these are the types of situations we want you guys to stand up for. Um, it could very well be you. Um, these union conversations and relationships can be very complicated for those that don't understand them. And then also, as we heard our dear circulated workers say, that everything is about trust. It's about trust and making sure that we have clear lines of communications, guys, palms up. So to those of you that are workers out there who may not be impacted by this, but one day could be, we want you guys to come forward. We want you guys voting. We want you guys communicating to the council member. As you heard Matthew mention, they're going to do phone banks on the 16th and 17th of September. They're going to be down at that uh, Wilson building all day from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., as he said, uh, speaking with different council members. So as workers, if you've been looking for an opportunity to become empowered beyond where you are, because at some point your frustrations and emotions have to transition into action, effective action. And this is where the democracy process is so important. You guys oh, must go down and speak to those elected leaders. You must be able to stand there uh, on the 23rd. You must be asking your family members and everyone that you know. Guys, palms up to you out there, to our listening audience. It's time to show up. Uh, God forbid we've lost a life in the district here recently. Uh, uh, and I understand that we had upwards of about 2,000 people show up. We show up for the loss of life. We show up for injustices, whether it's affecting our ability to go to go-go's or our ability to be able to do the things that we believe in. Well, these workers facing, facing the loss of their jobs and not having solidified contracts for their transition is important enough for you to stand with them. So if you want to do something, as you heard Mr. Matt Gerardi say, you can text four, to 47400 the word DC circulated, DC, C I R C U L A T O R, for anyone that has a brain fart. It's your girl, it's your girl. Palms up. These are some very important times. As I know many of you, when we get off tonight, they're going to be looking, uh, and you're going to be looking at the national or the presidential debate. Well, guys, I need you to know there's nothing more important than what's going on in your local local jurisdiction, because this is what's impacting our workers and our citizens uh, uh, directly. And as you heard Mr. Gerardi say, that the disproportionate amount of, of, of workers that are being affected are coming from Black and Brown communities, representative of wards 5, 7, 8, 4, and some of them don't live in the district. But should we not be a nation's capital? that should hold its elected officials, and most importantly, our mayor accountable. Well, guys, the power rests with the people. And this is time for you to exercise your rights, not just in November, but also in 2026, when it's time to vote for another mayor. And we're going to have that conversation the rest of the year and the rest of next year, too, palms up. It's your girl, it's your girl. If you're looking to be a part of helping helping to create a healthier D.C., then these are the types of arguments and fights and opportunities that you must show up for as our general public. You can go to www.healthydcandme.org. There's a blue <coughs> button that says, help us to create healthier a healthier D.C. When you click that button, you can go in and you can click the link to send a direct email you can text, as we said, the 47400 uh, with the word DC circulator so that you can start getting the updates and you can follow this. Guys, it's now or never palms up. Democracy, democracy is under attack. And not this mayor, not Mayor Bowser or any other elected official has to right to operate in this manner. Yeah. It's your girl, it's your girl. Palms up. Let's hear from more about these Palms circulating up. workers. Hey guys, why don't you open up or unmute, I should say, 
and join the conversation. Thanks to our circulator, our brave circulator employees that have continued to show up and have continued to speak on behalf of so many workers who are just not sure what to do. They just don't want to lose their job. Welcome, circulators. Anybody have anything you want to say? Hey, Matt, Anybody? I sent you a text, Matt. I, I, I just want clarity on what's our chances, if any, do we have on getting another garage and being transferred or transitioning over like we did, like you guys did for Cinder Bay? Because we really don't want to even have, we really don't want to even, you know, as far as Metro operators, we, we see a lot of their stuff on Facebook and we just want to stay separated as far as, we want to keep our seniority too. So what's our chances on having a garage like you did Cinder Bay? Yeah, I, I can't chance it. You know, that that would be irresponsible of me to say one chance. And if, you know, we're going to push 100%, I can tell you. Okay. Um, but, yeah, and at this point, we're going to use the cinder bed model in that there can be okay. a separate seniority list, right. either that be a physical location or that be a floating list so that we can hopefully get this done in that case. But again, those are the decisions that we're going to have to make down the line. And, you know, God willing, if we're able to get that transition over, those will be, those are conversations that we can have and we can iron out that. Okay. Thank hey, you. Matt, and on the tail end of that, thank you for that clarity. Um, there's another worker who mentioned that uh, they have just gotten, I believe, their second eligible rehire letter. Uh, are you familiar with what that might be? And, and, and how does that work itself into you all strategies moving forward to get these workers old? Yeah, my understanding is that that's probably from somebody who was let go of WMATA or um, once worked at WMATA in this case, right? Uh, my understanding, same with Cinderbed, same with the 73 precedent, is that that would hopefully um, get folks over in this case. That is my understanding of it. I can't make 100% ironclad commitment, but that is my understanding of that language. Okay, and just so we can be clear, for the workers that are here and the workers that will go back to transfer the conversation um, as best they're able to, it's your understanding that any workers that are still working at Circulate at this point should stay, do <laughs> not move. And, yes. and also any workers that may have applied and not gotten favorable responses, what you're hoping will happen is that this emergency legislation that you're lobbying the council members for would help to uh, uh, preserve them under those protections, assuming you're successful in getting the emergency legislation? Yes, that is my understanding. That is what we are aiming for. Obviously, we're going to take everything on a case-by-case -case basis too and try to work out what we can with individual members, You know, even as folks are applying over to Metro right now. But under, if this emergency legislation is being able to pass, like you said, that would transfer everybody over. I have okay, one other right. question. Okay. So the drivers that have been accepted by Metro, um, if they leave now, what happens? That's a good question. I would say as of right now, um, I can't give direct guidance on that. I'm not prepared to because again, they're still going to Metro. And I believe that at least we could take those and discuss those with the authority, especially if this transition happens at this point. So I don't want to tell folks and go on here and say, folks, if you have an offer from WMATA, don't take it at this point. Um, because I, I think that we could find a way to work it out with the authority, but I can't make that commitment responsibly right now. There was another question we had with, with Jackson the other night at the Thursday meeting after the rally down at Freedom Plaza. I asked that question people have already gone. So what's the possibility of them coming back once all this is, the dust is settled? He said that they would be able to come back. That's what he said to me. He said it in the meeting. So I, I'm hoping that once we finish tonight that you can have a conversation with him to get some type of clarity or, or foundation on what are we gonna do? Cause people have gone. Sure. So, you know, of course people wanna come back with, with being made whole. I mean, you're talking about a $29 pay cut. 
you talking about $11 pay cut starting over at $29. And like I said, I can go anywhere and start over. I'm not going to get my years back. And and a lot of us is up in age. So it, it's, not, it's not making any sense. And it's almost like we waited 20 years, which we're in a retirement stage, 20 years. It's not time to start over. It's almost like we're not going back. We can't go back. Yeah, understood. And that's what we've been emphasizing with the council as well at this point, is that this isn't like a you know thing of where folks can go back or there's a tiny delta between. This is a big change in livelihood. It is. And so for folks who are mid, late career professionals, right, it, it's not, you don't have the time to make it back. You don't have the time to necessarily um, work right. long enough to get all into this and make sure that you're you're getting your pension or everything else. So we, we have I to have that discussion. Yeah. I think a lot of it too is our bodies. I know my body and I see a lot of our operators walking, limping. I mean, can barely move the knees in the back, driving these type of vehicles is wear and tear and it's torn. Yeah. So it's almost impossible to do this all over again for another 20 years. It's, it's, it's not adding up. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully we can express that to the council people to let them know not only where we are, where we stand in, we're talking about our physical being. Yep. Okay. And right. and Matthew, will you? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I have so many questions on my page here. Will you help us understand? Uh, is the meeting this Thursday? Uh, just for clarity regarding that memo or uh, document that didn't have a date on it. No, so I can't. Obviously, I can't speak to exactly what the flyer was um, that we're talking about that doesn't have a date on it. But I can tell you that we did have a meeting on Thursday, August 29th. Um, when everybody came down to the union hall um, and we had a membership meeting at that point, right? So it's your understanding that the next time that you're expecting you all to convene would be on the 16th and 17th for the lobby days down at the council? Yes, but I will also say that if anybody wants, in this case, information, if they would like um, clarity from the union hall, again, um, we have info at atulocal689.org. Um, we will obviously be flyering. We are uh, both to the ridership, but also to our members to clarify exactly what our position is. Getting on that text blast, again, DC circulated to 47400. Um, that gets everybody on the same page so that we at least have an understanding about where we're at, what actions we're taking, and how folks can get involved. Okay. And then uh, the severance, you talked about the termination. I uh, hear that there is understanding that someone worked up with 18 years, that the only second offer would be in the next three weeks. Um, how would the emergency legislation address uh, what's been offered and, and would it reverse it if you are successful? Would you talk to us in that space? Yeah, I would say that, uh, you know, the emergency legislation, we will we'll pass that bridge when we get to it. But frankly, the severance was between negotiated between the union and the contractor, not between the union and DDOT. And so there's a little bit of a difference there in that DDOT and the decision that they are making to end the service instead of transition the service is on a parallel track that doesn't touch the one that we were trying to get on severance. On severance, we were trying to ensure that the contractor, no matter what happens, has you know a a plan in place to at least give something to everybody there. So that's a parallel track. That's not us operating, you know, and one hand not talking to the other. That's that's not what's happening there. It's that we're we're operating on multiple tracks. We're trying to talk with the contractor, but we're also trying to pressure, obviously, DDOT and the mayor, um, not only through this public letters and calls, but also through hopefully this emergency legislation that goes through. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Hey, guys, hey, guys, it's your girl. It's your girl. Matthew, if you sit tight for a moment, I'm going to see if I have any more workers that have any other questions. We're just trying to get to the bottom of the D.C. circulated workers who are fighting to be made whole. It's your girl. It's your girl. And you understand, Holmes, up the importance of being made whole. Does any one of my workers have any more comments or anything that they'd like to interject at this time? Hmm. I, um, um, let me ask you, um, because I'm, um, you know, word word is in the garage that 
when we did the five year extension, is there any way that we could get an email copy of the 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 original? Because our pre our prior GM, William Proctor, um, some kind of way has a, and I'm only speculating a gag order against him. Mm -hmm. So is there any information that we can get from that aspect of what really happened? Because Again, they said that they had a 20 year uh, contract, but uh -huh. I don't know, but this is the word that they had a 20 year contract and then they broke it down. But we got the five year extension in yeah. memo. So how did it happen? How did it go from five years to eight months? What happened from five years to eight months? Why can't we get down to the bottom of what changed? That's a great question that unfortunately I just don't have the answer to at this point, because that goes into the relationship between a DDOT and their contractor, frankly. Um, and so I, I can't speak to that off the top of my head. Can you tell Can me I if the union has a contract that shouldn't a union, shouldn't a union have the contract between DDOT and RAPDEV? Question. The contract, that five-year contract, that is, I believe, and it should be publicly available at this point oh, no we we've been looking for it and okay. i i think we need to start that's our foundation we need to start what was in that contract because i'm sure that contract was not fulfilled because i was at once the shop store and i know some of the language in that contract gave the operators incentives and they had to have a certain amount of operators a certain amount of supervisors a certain amount of road supervisors and i'm sure at some point it was never fulfilled the way that, that it was supposed to be. Sure. No, and I will endeavor to find that answer for you. That's a really good question. Okay. Thank I you. I love that question. And I also want to mention, we touched on the Freedom of Information Act, FOIA. I want you guys to write that down and remember it so that when you go down to speak with the council members, you want their assistance with helping you to gain access to this Freedom of Information Act information that will allow you to have access to contracts. These are the types of questions yeah. that you want to place before them. Does anyone else have anything else? DC Circulator Workers, the platform is yours. We do this for you all. Do you have any questions or any comments, anything you don't understand? I'm gonna open. Can we, oh. can we, uh, yeah, I, I would like to say something. Come on. This this operator, this operator Hampton. Um, today I seen a a, a insert or something from Newsbreak. Mm -hmm. It was talking about um how. Oh, let me let me pull it up real fast. Hold on, give me two, give me two seconds. I I, I know an overview of what it was about, but I want to read a little line for line so. Since y'all the union, y'all can understand what I'm saying. Oh, here you go, right here. Um, it was saying Metro Bus proposes additional services as DC circulated discontinues, and basically was saying um that Wamada proposed an agreement between the district and Metro to increase the budget. Until like um, January or something. Did you hear anything about that union? So I think you're probably talking about today. Um, Wamada announced, um, and I think the mayor announced that they were beefing up some of the routes and some of the service along what circulator is running currently and will run down running. Um, the problem still is that, and as I mentioned before, was that even with with an increase in service comes an increase in cost, right? Um, so therefore, even if you know we're having and the idea was to save money in the budget by winding down circulator, um, it doesn't quite fit the express um, how do I say this goal, right of Okay, we're we're cutting out that cost entirely um, because you're having to run more service anyway. So why wouldn't you want to also transfer over 
the facilities, either through a negotiated sale, right? So that you're you're selling the rolling stock, you're selling some of the facilities that you can sell. So for example, I know that one of the garages is owned by the National Park Service, so it can't be sold. But basically the way that you could do that is that there it's capital that could be sold to Ramada, um, akin to what happened in 1973 with the transfer over, right? And then that pays for increased operations, service, personnel, all that. As of right now, they're just closing down the surface without actually getting rid of any of the capital or making any agreements or commitments or transferring over the workers. So again, like I was saying at the top, this is not only, you know, potentially costing the district more money to do, it's screwing over workers, it's screwing over riders, uh, because even though, yeah, there's some beefed up service along these routes and that's good, there's this transition has just been done in such a haphazard way um, that we we can't guarantee that, you know, all these routes are going to be served. And I, again, when I was down at the Wilson building, I, I was hearing from some council members who were saying, well, the routes that I wanted to be buffed up weren't served or the ways that I wanted to see this done weren't being done correctly. So again, the acceleration of the timeline, not transferring over the assets, not getting this transition done in the correct way that we wanted it to get done is a real disappointment. Um, and we need to push the mayor to reverse course either through public pressure or and now it seems like the legislation is going to be the main ask and the main avenue through which we do that. Matthew, uh, one of the things that the workers uh, did was they came together to discuss what they felt would help make them whole. Um, but, but where the men look like, and one of the obviously the hearing for oversight understandings. But also, there's a conversation that speaks to the fact that since there was a five-year contract awarded by DDOT, um, why is there a possibility that there should be some ability to hold their feet to the fire to honor some aspect of those five years? Um, in terms of financial transitional packages or severance or what have you. And then the second piece was that um, the fact that RATV dev, or what is it, RATP dev, yeah. the uh, yeah. employer, if they would not at least be on the hook to honor some aspect of financial feasibility through March, um, since there's some sort of a contract or something that's in place until then? Yeah, I can I can't speak to that confidently. Um, I would have to see the contract. And frankly, I'm not a legal expert, so I, I can't um, exactly give that answer definitively right now. Okay. So again, guys, it's your girl. It's your girl. Palms up. And thank you so much for hanging in here with us. We are over the hour, but it's necessary, necessary to be able to make sure that our, our workers understand that we, along with them, want these understandings because we intend to show up and to help advocate and rally with them because no one wants to be facing the loss of their job or any of this. And as you know, as you know, my posture is, is that if we can't have some ability to be stable and whole, then it's going to impact somewhere else in our living negatively. And so we must be brave enough to come forward and speak on these matters. Do I have any of my community members? I want to open it up to my community voices on the call tonight. Does anyone have any comments that they'd like to share or any comment, uh, uh, any uh, remarks that they'd like to make? I see Yvonne. Welcome to the platform, Yvonne. If you will unmute and come forward. Yvonne, you have the floor. Sometimes it's a challenge to unmute. Let's see if I can send you a signal. You just got a signal. Can you unmute? There you go. I'm Welcome here. to the Palms Up platform. Hey, I'm Palms Up. I'm calling, I'm on this line today because I am a writer of the circulator and it, it does us a justice. The only thing I wanted to say to the employees of DC Circulator, in order for us to do this in the, uh, a good way, collect as many people as you can to come to the rally, the more the merrier. You catch more bees with honey than you do with vinegar. I've gone to rallies and it's no need. I've talked to circulated drivers, DC circulated drivers who did not even know about the rally that was on Labor Day. 
And one driver told me, he said, I didn't even know anything about it. So there seems to be a communication gap somewhere. But even if you don't do anything, but get your family members, because see, this is affecting your livelihood. It's affecting your, your family's livelihood. Bring as many people as you can to rally because when you they see a lot of people down there, they don't know if you're DC res, uh, residents or not. Those are votes that they are gonna say, well, if we don't do what these people say, then we're not gonna be voted in. So we need to bring as many people as we can. And I will be there, even though I'm, I don't work for DC Circulator, but I don't want you out of a job because you're better than WMATA. Number one, I've gone, I ride the buses and the subways every day. And on this line that's on Minnesota Avenue, there's always a shortage of drivers, which means that they say a bus coming in 20 minutes, it may be 40 minutes. So don't let them misconstrue you that they have a whole bunch of workers. I just feel that they're doing this so they can get you to come work for them cheaper because they don't have enough drivers. So I'm just saying, bring as many people as you can to this rally. If you see people standing on the corner, bring them with you too. Because if the council people see that it's a wide mass majority of people who are concerned about the circulator, and a lot of people are, don't believe that you're by yourself. But I'm just saying to you, bring as many people as you can to this rally. That's all I had to say. Palms up. Palms up to you, Queen. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Any more of my public voices? Pam, I'm going to come back to you in just a minute. Any more of my public voices want to weigh in or share a comment on this evening's uh, commentary? Anyone? Unmute. No? Hey, Ham, come on forward. You wanted to say something. I saw that you had your hand up. Why don't you unmute and come forward? No, I ain't want to say nothing. I was just high five and Miss Yvonne. Uh, <laughs> Isn't that a high five moment? Hey, girls. Yeah. Let me let me let me share this. When I when I when I came back to work Monday, I had a lady, elderly lady, get on my bus at M and Fourth, I believe, at the Safeway down at um, Eastern Market route, and she told me on the thirty first of this month, since this this going to be the last day for for the Eastern Market route, that she was going to get on a bus and not get off. So the public is talking. What happened? I can't hear. The ground is on me. I don't hear anything. Oh, there, you go. Okay. Oh, there you go. I don't know what happened. I think Ron is on mute. Uh oh, thank you. I heard everybody but myself. Thank you so much, Matt. Guys, this your girl is your girl. And I was just simply saying that it's time to get involved. You've got to get out. You've heard these workers. This is their third appearance on the Palms Up show. This week, they're joined by the communications director at the ATU Local 689, who stands in solidarity with them. There's much work still to be done. There's requests for uh, emergency legislation to come forward. Guys, they're going to be down there on September the 16th and the 17th, uh, speaking with the council members, lobbying to get their questions asked. And as you heard tonight, there are still many questions to be asked. They want to hold this mayor accountable. As we can't just show up when there are matters that you are familiar with. You've got to show up even if you don't understand, because it will help support someone else. Our workers and our citizens alike should be able to operate from higher standards. Of the bus, they bus. should not be dealing with mm -hmm. this as they are. And when we have rogue elected public officials that are not operating accountably, then we have a responsibility. But can I talk to you about something? Let me see if I get close enough in this camera. Can we talk? Because this is something that's predominantly affecting black and brown families. But will black and brown families show up and fight harder for themselves than everyone else around them does? See, there's a time to be frustrated. There's a time to be confused. But once you see that the writing on the wall says that you must act, then you must act. So there are no excuses, guys. As you heard Mr. Girardi say, you can text 
DC circulator, all one word with no spaces to 47400 and be included in the chain of information going forward. You can go to www.healthydcandme.org. On that first page, you can push the button that says, help us to create a healthier DC. And under that button, you will see the language for the uh, union's link that allows you to directly email DDOT, the director who's already complaining that she's overwhelmed. They've got 1,400 emails that have gone out. Let's double that number. We're going to circulate tonight's show far and wide. The last DC circulated show touched 4,100 people. Let's keep doing the numbers and palms up. Thank you for sharing. But this will not be effective if we don't show up, as you heard our dear community team say, Miss Yvonne, palms up. Bring everybody, bring the children, start to educate them about the importance of showing up. Palms up. You can also show up on September the 23rd and be a part of yet another protest on behalf of these DC circulators. Never mind what the headlines and the news is talking about. You come and show up in person, palms up, so you can get firsthand account of how your support will help show these council members and most especially. Muriel Bowser, the understanding that in D.C. we take care of our own. We don't operate like this, and we can do this better. Thumbs up. Hey, guys, before we round about to get on up out of here, I want to invite uh, Mr. Perry Red and my overseer, Dr. Ann Coles, my right hand. I want to see if we can get a word in this week to send you guys out with something positive. But just know that we and the viewers of the Palms Up show, we stand in solidarity with you as we made a commitment that your fight is our fight. So, Perry Red, did you have any closing remarks? Mr. Red? All righty, Overseer Coles, will you unmute? Do you have any closing remarks? Um. Just be, be encouraged, but this is a time too now that you really got to come together. Yeah. Put, put, put your differences aside because you're in survival mode right now. You're in survival mode. You know, it's a body with many parts. So each of y'all got a part of the body. Keep the fight. Don't let them divide you. See, that's the problem. We let them divide us, our black community. We got to come together like they did back in the day. If one go down, we all go down. That's how you're going to get your voice heard. Take the fear factor out of it and go for it. We needed this. Amen. Amen. Hey, DC Circulator, third week. Looks like you guys got a hefty schedule ahead of you all. I will meet you down there in those front lines. Does anyone have any follow-up or final say before I invite Mr. Girardi to do the same? Anyone? Yes. Okay, come on forward. If you all need flyers, I have flyers. Just let me know which garage needs them. I also want you all to try to get them out at the schools. We definitely need those parents. Absolutely, and the supermarkets, all the way our seniors are. Oh, yeah, we've been to the store. <laughs> yeah, our senior, seniors are solid. Our seniors show up, and they recognize that now more than ever, we're going backwards instead of forwards, and so our voices must come to the front line. Thank you so much, Kane. Anyone needing flyers, make sure that you let her know or put it in the chat so that you guys can start communicating. Any of my other workers want to say anything before we wrap up? Anybody, anything? Has this been informative? Will you guys unmute and tell me what you're hearing tonight? Does this help you on your journey? We have a question. Yes. Can we do a follow-up after this? Um, like once we finish out the week, can we come back and see where we're going to be then? Awesome. I love that question. Palms up. You guys. Yeah have an open-ended invitation to Palms Up show. Why don't we do this? Why don't we plan 
Uh, let's see, the week of the 16th and the 17th, you're going to be down lobbying. And then why don't we plan to do a show before you guys do your 23rd rally or protest to make sure we give you another opportunity to get that word out. Um, so if we did that, you're rallying on the 16th and the 17th. How does the 18th of September work for everyone? Can we come back together at 7 p.m. on the 18th? Yes. Okay, then I yes. will, at your request, put a link together for you all, and I will reserve the 18th for you all to come back and let us know uh, what actually is going on. And that's, that's the same day because I have a meeting with Mr. Robert White. Although he's not on the Transportation Committee, he is a recipient of our CEASE Act legislation that speaks to the concerns that we have as mental health advocates. So we're going to be shadowing all of what you all are doing. Um, does anyone have anything else that they'd like to share before I open the floor back up to Mr. Girardi for closing remarks? We're going to try. We're going to try and get. I'm going to try and get passengers and and people in the public to come back on palms up because, like I said, I had a passenger that got on my bus Monday, and she told me at September 31st she was going to get on the bus and not get off, and I really believe her. So yeah. That's oh, where we are. I love that idea. Why don't everybody be committed to bringing at least one guest? Everyone has family. And right. guys, you're home and you're trying to hold it together and you're trying to figure this Bring out. Them. Don't leave your family out. Get your family involved. That's more voices. Um, their friends are more voices. I know when you first came to the platform, there was uh, concerns that it's embarrassing to be driving that bus and to have your life playing out in real time on the news or people getting on the bus, yeah. understanding that you're possibly losing your job. As I want you to know, as I told you then and I'll tell you now, there is no shame. There is no shame because this could be happening to anyone. And this is why it's important that we educate ourselves, our family members, and most especially our children. You mm. must be engaged in the democracy that you've been afforded. You must vote. You must understand that when the time comes to talk to council members, you do not let that get by you. This is important today, and it's gonna be important tomorrow. And from what I see from the call and from your continued communication, you've got to stay at the table and talk to your union. You're paying money for dues. You need to understand what it represents. Absolutely. How many of us are paying for insurance, as I said at the top of the hour? You don't care about it until you have an accident or you need to use it or rely on it. Well, your unions are supposed to be your insurance. When you run into something as catastrophic, a, a catastrophe, I should say, as this. I, I would like I would like to suggest to the union that instead of us paying dues to have white parties and car shows and, you know, um, pop ups, why not take some of that money in a crisis like we're in now and pay for professional advocates, mental health? I mean, I want to see money being put to use in a in in a time like now. I love that. I'm going to ask Matt to answer that and also give us his wrap up. Matt, don't forget that question, as I'm sure you won't. Um, I love that, Queen. Is there anybody else who wants to voice their opinion? share a closing remark? I have one anything. other question for Gerardi. Okay. Um, is there any legal services that can be provided for us um, by the union about that contract, how we can get that contract? Yeah, we have a general counsel. Um, and so obviously we will look into it and see if this is not being posted publicly when it should be posted publicly. Why is that not? Is there, but I cannot say exactly what that cir circumstance is. I imagine if it's a DDOT contract, it should be posted publicly. Um, so that's something that we can address as a staff and look into. The other thing I would say is, well, in terms of putting in allocating funds, it's a union. And so we make democratic decisions and every month we have obviously our, our union charter meetings come. Please, you know, make that motion to the floor. Talk to the top five leadership. Talk to, obviously, CJ, Stuart. Um, CJ, your executive board member, shop steward, right? 
um, to make sure that that motion comes to the floor. Because it's your union in the end as well. And so you get a say. Can we also um, ask the council members uh, to rescind her decision as far as the mayor? I mean, I think that's that might be something we can put in their heads to rescind the decision that she made as far as where we are right now. Yeah, because basically it was built on lies, false information. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys asked that question. Hey, Matthew, that's a good one for you to address before we wrap up. Um, what is the reality? I mean, because let's talk in reality. What is the reality that this is too far down the road, that that's not an option? Or in your opinion, are there still opportunities to do just what the connect of reverse and make decision? Well, let me say DC Circulator <laughs> is going to go away in one way, shape, or form at this point because it didn't make it through this budget effectively. If anybody was following this budget, this was a really tough budget, and effectively council itself decided to pass a budget that called for the transition, the wind down of DC Circulator. So we're not going to be able to save Circulator and preserve service the way that it has been. So that's why we're going for this transition, is that we think that, okay, if we get the transition, then we're able to bring everybody over, make your livelihoods whole and intact when we're going over to stand in solidarity and to make sure that you're still part of this union and to make sure that you're still part of being transportation professionals that you are serving the city, serving this region. Um, I, that's why we're going for that. I, I get all of that, but at the same time, Again, the decision the the she made this service free. Yeah. She put it out there that it was free. So for you to tell me it's because of lack of ridership, it's because of lack of equipment not working properly. I just believe that what she said is is so far from the truth because we're out there driving these buses every day. And regardless if a passenger pays or not. When that person crossed that uh, clever device, it's supposed to count them, and it doesn't work. So why isn't she being challenged on her lie? And her equipment is still out on the street operating the same in, in under the oh. same conditions. Sure, sure. I have one other question. Okay, come on. Why do, is there any way, we didn't get a say as to anything that transpired. It feel, it's almost feel like that we were given to WMATA without an option, no other alternatives from the mayor. Because her words were, she was going to give the fleet of buses and employees we were going over to WMATA and be incorporated. Although she lied about that as well, why can't we challenge the things that she said? Because for one, we are human beings. We should be able to make our own choices. We shouldn't be forced to go with WMATA. A lot of the drivers don't really want to go with them. So what are their options? We still were robbed of our jobs, our seniority, our years of service. We, so much was taken from us. Why can't we challenge Seven's the, pay. <laughs> the, the council to overturn her decision or even make some other, even if they don't overturn that decision, at least give us some other options that would right. allow us time to adjust to the changes um force their hand with making her keep the uh contract until march at least so the drivers can make other preparations for the people that don't want to go to wamada but i feel like we were traded like slaves we didn't get yeah. no options no pay. <laughs> everything was taken and here you go this is what you get or you get nothing and so those are the very so, voices and the points I that want you to make challenge to some of these, these things All that were done to us you challenge all of it. Matthew is just saying that he can't be on the hook for guaranteeing things that he has no control over. From where he sits, it looks like this is this is not going to be uh, something that is salvageable. However, there are members of a transportation committee uh, that serve on the D.C. Council. that you will be going down and speak to on the 16th, the 17th, and then you'll be rallying on the 23rd. You will all go to the link so that you can email directly. You will utilize every avenue made available for your voices to be heard. You will continue to speak out in the press 
about what your concerns are in order that you can garner the levels of support needed. You want that copy of the contract. So you want to keep asking for that. You want to understand what that language is since that seems to be the foundation for helping you to understand how this all came to be anyway. Um, Matthew, one of the questions I wanted to ask you was, um, the, there's a blue bus that was uh, put into oh, service uh -huh. over in Ward 8 Southeast. And my question was, because one of the rationalizations given was that the uh, mayor of the city was going to save upwards of 30 plus million by shutting down Circulator. But then we saw a report that came out that said that the city spent uh, approximately 40000 on this blue bus. Yeah. How does that work? For you, in terms of your understanding of the conversations, do you had this union have any knowledge of this blue bus service? Um, the correlation to that versus circulator being closed? No, I don't. I don't have knowledge of that. That's the first that I'm hearing of it in this case. So okay. I would absolutely look into that. Um, I'll email you the information. Please do. Awesome. Awesome. And see, these are the types of conversations we want to have when we come together. I'm so proud of all of you all. And, and Matt, I can't thank you enough before I give my glowing response and send us out of here. We've got about three minutes, but I wanted to rightfully thank you again. Comes up to you for spending your time this evening. It can't be easy being in a hot seat trying to answer for other folks' actions as well as, you know, your own uh, companies um, as it relates to frustrated workers. But could you give us a wrap up or is there anything that you haven't been able to share with us that you'd like for our palms up viewers and these workers to understand? Thank you. Yeah, I would absolutely say that we do stand in solidarity with everybody. This is a union. This is a collective. This is a shared project between all of us to ensure that transportation workers at DC Circulator, at WMATA, at DASH, at Fairfax Connector, are all using our collective power to come together and ensure that we're getting the best conditions, wages, benefits, empowering workers and working class people as best that we can. Um, this was incredibly underhanded by the mayor to go about it this way. Um, if you check our social media, if you check our um, press releases, if you check, I know that President Jackson, as a matter of fact, was just talking with DC News Now about this earlier tonight. Um, we hear your frustration. I am sorry that all of you are having to go through this. Um, and I'm sorry that the mayor has decided to go on this route and put us all through this titanic struggle of trying to ensure that a transition is done right so that it keeps everybody whole. But we are going to fight. We are going to do so. And we need your help to do it. We need to stick together. Uh, because if we're sticking together, we have a better chance of winning this. So I will say that for anybody who is interested coming to the Union Hall over at 2701 Whitney Place over in Forestville, Maryland to pick up flyers, we are happy to print them out. Um, we will have opportunities going out, texted out to y'all uh, for phone banking effectively to call through these council members that you will have the points provided to be able to talk to them about this emergency legislation. Uh, obviously the 16th and the 17th for lobby days but all throughout this, we are also going to be, as we said, flyering ridership, making sure that they know uh, exactly what's happening, making sure that they know to turn out on the 23rd, lend their voices, send an email if they haven't already, and if they have, make sure that uh, they get their family and friends to do so as well. So Matt, let me ask you this. Um, on now, uh, I know you mentioned Dash and a couple of other uh, garages. Um, and I know Jackson mentioned that he was going to try to get the city to subsidize the difference in pay. So since that we since we do have allies that's partnered with us, would it be um, fair to say if we were able to get the city to subsidize the difference in our wages, would people that went to Dash be um, could they like take the money from the city to give to Dash if that was an option since oh, we are our allies of Dash or whoever else? You know what I'm saying? So if he was to get the money from the city and 10 people went to Dash, can we get the money from the city, the subsidy, and give to the workers that went to Dash? 
that's not exactly mm -hmm. how a transition works in this case because the city is going to subsidize obviously um the, service, the city. service has run within the city right so that's handed off to wamada in that case okay and effectively what we're looking at and we're not even looking for a subsidy we are looking to for a transition basically to get the again taking or a takeover so to speak of dc circulator rolling stock facilities routes as well as obviously employees so that our successorship clause within the WOMADA contract, section 109, it's called, comes into effect because in that case, then it says, okay, all of the employees will be able to keep their seniority in terms of length of service um, when they come over to the successor company. Oops. If we are able to have the successor company designated as WOMADA, then therefore, if you are driving for 10 years and you're making you know, 37, 40 bucks an hour in this case, then you will still also take those years of service and that will be counted over at Metro. So that would be considered grandfather in us in. That's, yes. that's, the, that's the word. Yes. Hey, guys, hey, guys, it's your girl, it's your girl. And just like that, we have wrapped up two hours. Our DC mm -hmm. circulators still have questions and comments, as you can imagine. We want you guys to know that Mr. Matthew Gerardi has put his email address in the chain. I would recommend that you all jot it down and send him any of your follow-up comments or questions. I would also advise you, who have, who, those of you in our listening audience, as well as our DC Circulator workers, to text the word DC Circulator with no spaces. Text it to 47400 so that you can be added to the information chain. Make a note on your schedules that on the 16th and 17th that you all will be down lobbying, lobbying with DC council members, speaking with them face to face to ask them so much of what you discuss tonight and more. Um, guys, we want you to know that you can go to www.healthydcandme.org. On the first page, there's a blue button that says help us to create healthier, a healthier DC. When you click that button, it will give you the option to also sign up and send a direct email to the director of DDOT and the mayor's office to let them know that you stand in solidarity with these workers and with their right to be made whole. Um, Mr. Cameron Montgomery, a community uh, uh, representative on the call says, thank you all so much for your bravery and the work you all are doing. My hand is raised to assist in any way. Um, so you guys have support from members of our public. Um, we're gonna carry forward and keep it on to uh, uh, keep you guys lifted up. Uh, it looks like Yvonne wants some flyers so she can pass flyers out. So uh, those of you that are getting the flyers circulated, please get in touch with me so that we can help to get them out on the community level in support of you all. To my Palms Up listeners, please get involved. Palms Up. I heard someone calling my name. Are we good? All righty, all righty. And let me be clear. A week from today is September the 17th. But in honor of the fact that you guys will be down there lobbying on the 16th and 17th, and many of you won't finish before 6 p.m., we're going to do a special edition of the Palms Up show on Wednesday, September the 18th. We will circulate the ad and we will send out the link. Please come back and join us as we help to prepare the D.C. populators for their Wilson Building Rally that will be held on September the 23rd. Guys, it's your girl, it's your girl. There's so much going on in the nation's capital. You ought to be about it instead of just talking about it. I'm your girl, I'm your girl. Palms up. I wish all of you, all of you all, a wonderful rest of your evening. I thank you all for staying with us for two hours, and we're going to continue to follow and support our DC circulating workers. Mr. Matthew Girardi, thank you so much for holding that hot seat down so well. We mm -hmm. appreciate you, and thanks for taking the invite. Calm thanks, up Matt. Tomorrow. Thank you, Matt. Of course. Thanks for having me. All right. Come again. Thank you. Thank All right. you. All right, my workers. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. You all as well. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.
This has been a disaster for people. 